It took three betrayals for me to finally understand. The world is just an elaborate tapestry of lies. My fury will never be quelled. The first to betray me was a god, my creator, my mother. Valuing strength above all, she saw no worth in me and I was discarded. The second was a human, my family, my friend. Consumed by fear, he saw me as an abomination. The third was one exactly like me. A hope for the future. A fledgling barely out of the nest. Powerless before his mortality, he broke his promise to me. Humans, they can't be trusted. And the gods fill me with pure loathing. So I said good riddance. <laughs> I denounced the world and laugh in its face. <laughs> My chest will never again be defiled by worldly filth. I will scrub away every last trace of human emotion. Then it will be empty, a blank slate, and ready to receive a supreme gnosis, brimming with pure divinity. <laughs> Memories? Everything matches what we know about him. But how is he connected to the divine consciousness that Hapasia was talking about? You saw it, right? You felt it, right? Oh, such a majestic god! Such a noble will! Such sublime emotion! Alas, shame. If only... If only that which beats within my chest wasn't a filthy mortal heart. Oh, oh great and merciful God. Please. Do you understand now? I'm afraid this is no peri poor in a life, but rather... Ah! You! Why are you so mean to me? Why is everyone hiding from me? I found divine wisdom. Shouldn't I receive praise and honor? Haven't I uncovered that light in the darkness? Apasia? That's how I always thought everything should be. Wait... Have I... Already lost my mind? Wait, something isn't right!
Wait, no. Something feels different. <gasps> You're back! Oh, the Traveler's back? Nahida was controlling your body for a while. It seemed like she jumped over to you as an emergency measure right before the Catherine puppet was dis- After that, Kainari heard the commotion and came over. He helped us defeat the mercenaries and then he ran with us all the way here. What? You swapped places? You mean your consciousness also went into Nahida's body? Wait, then where is Nahida's consciousness? I never imagined that an individual's consciousness could be transferred around like this. Had I not seen it with my own eyes, I would have never believed it. Also, while we were running, the consciousness in your body told me to pass on a message. She said, The doctor has found a way to trap my consciousness, so I can't journey with you anymore. But even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. <sighs> He is trapped in the sanctuary of Sora's daughter for good this time. Was that message all she left for us? It's pretty vague. Oh, that makes sense. Since the doctor captured her, she won't be able to say anything without him knowing. Even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. Huh. Paimon knows the moon illusions and lies are from that alchemical divination at the Subzeru's festival. Didn't Nahida use a starlight analogy before? It had something to do with Sataria. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Huh. Do you think Nahida was telling us to go find help in the desert? But she isn't with us anymore. Uh, think we'll be okay? Paimon, you said Sanctuary of Surasthana. Does this mean that this Nahida you're talking about, the consciousness who was occupying the Traveler's body, is the Dendro Archon? Uh, your guess is correct, but the situation's a bit complicated, so it's really hard for us to explain right now. That's all right. A scholar's curiosity doesn't need to be appeased right away. As for the complicated nature of the situation, safe to say I have witnessed that for myself. I've spent some time with you, and it looks like the Dendro Archon's also on your side, so... I trust you. Thank you, Tainari. Oh, actually, we came here to ask you a question. What do you know about the project that the Sages have been working on? Ah, that... While I was indeed invited to join that project, the Sages were always secretive about its scope and goals, so I eventually declined. All I know is that that project has something to do with the restoration of Ermansoul. Huh? Did you see something when you were in Nahida's body? What? Do you have any evidence? Hmm. Hmm. So that's what happened. That explains why Hypatia's symptoms were different from those of the other scholars who went mad. It's because she made contact with the consciousness of a new god who is still in the process of being born. Tainari, did you leave the Avidia Forest because of Hypatia? I did. I noticed Hypatia's mental anomalies, but since her symptoms were rather atypical, I secretly took her to Pardee's DI and began searching for a way to return her to If I didn't take action, Hypatia would have already been taken by the Matra to the desert, doomed to a life of exile at Aru Village. Now that you mention it, I knew the Academia has never thought particularly highly of Lesser Lord Kusanali, but, but I still didn't expect them to do something as arrogant as creating a new god. Looks like I made the right... The Doctor and the Balladeer. We have two Fatui Harbingers in Sumeru. Sounds like we're in for a bad time. From your description, I don't think they've completed their project. There may still be room for us to intervene. But then... 
what is the connection between creating a new god and restoring Ermin's soul? Yeah, it feels like we're still nowhere close to figuring out the sage's goals. Right, we've pretty much gone over everything we need to know, so we- I'll stay here for now. I still want to try a few more things to help Papasia. If you're planning to go into the desert, start by heading for Caravan Rabat. That'll be your fastest route. Come find me here if there's anything else I can do to help. May the spirit of wisdom go with you. Thanks, Tainari. Hopefully, Hapasia will feel better soon. We're off then.